Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kara, and in today's video, I'm going to be making a few different recipes. So earlier this year, at the beginning of January, I got a new book, and it is called Simply Living Well by Julia Watkins. This is what the cover of it looks like. It's a really beautiful book. I didn't really know anything about her or the book really before I ordered it. I just sort of looked at the reviews, looked at a couple previews in the photos, and I was pretty impressed. So it's a neat book. It includes different recipes for um, stuff in the kitchen, natural cleaning products, natural wellness, even gardening tips and things like that, which doesn't apply right now since I'm in an apartment. But basically today's video, I'm going to be focusing just on some of the kitchen stuff. So one of the recipes will be this no need artisan bread. I actually made this for the first time last week, but I modified it a little bit. That was my first time ever attempting any loaf of bread. I know a lot of people are trying to do that these days, and so I wanted to try it myself. I, instead of using all-purpose flour, had used white whole wheat, which I find is typically a good one-to-one -one ratio to all-purpose in like muffins or cake or cookies and things like that. So I thought maybe it would work with bread but I probably should have done like half and half. So long story short, I started yesterday with a new batch of bread. Honestly, it's quite simple. All that you do is you combine your flour, yeast, and salt in a bowl. I did end up deciding to add some roasted garlic, so I threw that in as well, along with a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of rosemary, just to add some extra flavor. Basically, you just mix that up with your hands, kind of form it into a rough ball, leave it in a bowl covered with like a dish towel overnight. It has been about 22 and a half hours, so we're really perfect on the timing here. Basically, it's supposed to double in size and start to bubble, so it actually does look like that. I did peek at it a little bit. I'll show you what it looks like. But now the next step is to flour your counter a little bit, fold it over onto itself only once or twice because this is a no need recipe. I've just thought it might be a little bit easier since I'm new to bread making. And then we're gonna basically let it rest for another two hours before it goes into the oven and it should rise a little bit more. So let's get to that right now. So as you can see, it's grown quite a bit since I put it in here yesterday. While that's sitting, I'm going to be making a couple other recipes. I'm going to attempt to make oat milk. I made macadamia milk last week and that actually came out pretty good. It was very simple. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. But I'm going to try to make oat milk and then I'm going to make a homemade veggie stock and I've kind of been collecting some ingredients for that over the past week. So let's get to the next step of this bread and then while that's resting I'll talk to you guys a little bit more. <laughs> okay I have to get really low here but basically I'm going to, I just as you can see floured the surface here. I'm going to dump out the dough onto the counter, flour the top of it a little bit, fold it over and then yeah, just let it rest for two hours. As you can see, it's gotten quite stringy in there. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be sticking this much. I'm very much a novice when it comes to bread making, but let's see how it comes out. Definitely smell the roasted garlic. <laughs> there we go. All right, plopped it out here. It did say to get a little bit more flour to put on top, so I'm gonna do that. And I do know that with this, you don't want to really compress it too much because you do want to keep some of those air bubbles. So re we really are just trying to kind of fold it over onto itself. If you have made bread before, <laughs> let me know. I'm probably doing something wrong. So feel free to add some tips, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> that actually doesn't look too bad. Okay, well I don't want to mess with it too much, so next step is just to lay out a clean dish towel. It says to put a little bit of flour on it, and then put another dish towel over it. And then we're just going to let that sit. 
So the recipe says to let that sit for two more hours. It supposedly is going to double in size again. I'm not sure, mine last week didn't do that, but like I said, I used a different type of dough. So we're just gonna let this sit here, see what happens, and then we'll preheat the oven. But in the meantime, I'm gonna rinse my hands and make probably the veggie stock. I'll get that going first. It was getting really warm, so I had to change really quick. But now we are on to our next recipe, which is the food scrap veggie stock. I'll show you a photo here. That is what that looks like. It's a really unique idea. I have not made this recipe before, but I'm really interested in trying it because it's very customizable and the flavor is going to change every time that you make it. Something I don't think I mentioned earlier about this book is that it's a guide to creating a natural low waste home. So basically she helps you around your house reduce waste. And today, as I mentioned, I'm just focusing on recipes but I tend to feel like I'm pretty good about not wasting much when it comes to cooking. But this is a really unique way to use some of your food kitchen scraps. So some of the things that I have here are some potato skins from some sweet potatoes. I have in here some onion skins, kale stems, I think a little bit more potato and leek greens. I have some in there and then also I also have this bag too of the green part of the leeks, a little bit more onion and I think some like parsley stems. So I'm really interested to try this. Basically you take four cups of your food scraps and as you're cooking throughout the week you could just throw them into like a gallon Ziploc bag, throw it in the freezer and it'll last for a while so that when you're ready to make your veggie stock, you just have it there ready for you. And then you do add some traditional veggie stock items fresh. So I do have onion, you're supposed to add two onion and leeks, but I thought with the amount of onion skin and leeks that I have in those bags, I think we're good on that flavor. So one onion for me, two medium carrots, but they were a bit small, so I have three some garlic and a little bit of celery. Basically, I'm just going to roughly chop this, throw this in with eight cups of water, four cups of the food scraps, and a little bit of herbs. She recommends using fresh herbs, but all that I have is rosemary. So I thought I'll just throw in some dried herbs instead, and I think we'll still get a decent flavor from that. So I'm just gonna throw in some rosemary and thyme let that simmer for about an hour and then strain out all of these solids to ultimately get our veggie broth. So I'm gonna go ahead now, roughly chop this and get it started. Okay, I have everything in the pot now. So all of our veggie scraps, fresh veggies, water, and I put in some rosemary, thyme, salt, and pepper. I also forgot to mention earlier, I used the scraps from roasted garlic. So I'm not sure if that's really gonna add much flavor since it's just the scraps, but we'll see. So just going to simmer this and then put on a lid but leave it partially uncovered. So we'll do that and let it sit for about an hour. Okay, we are now on to our third recipe, which is oat milk. I've tried to make oat milk in the past. It did not come out well at all. <laughs> that was years ago. I blended it, strained it, thought I did everything right, and it came out like really slimy and not the right consistency whatsoever. So I did a little bit of research. It's quite simple to make, but there are some key points that you need to know when making oat milk to make sure that it comes out as the right consistency. Last week, I actually made macadamia nut milk, which was a recipe in the book that I've been using throughout today. 
and that came out really well it was super easy basically you just soak the macadamia nuts i want to say it was eight hours i'd have to check but basically you just soak them and then you drain the water that's in there put them in a blender with fresh water and it makes like four cups of nut milk and then of course you do have to strain it so i do have a specific bag here that is for different like nut milks and things like that i mean you could use probably like a cheesecloth too, but I use this. So in terms of making oat milk, all that you need is one cup of oats and then four cups of water. And what I messed up before, first of all, is that you should use cold water. You don't want it to be warm because that kind of encourages the oatmeal to cook a little bit, just like when you would make oatmeal on the stove or in the microwave and it's going to kind of become more gummy. You don't want that with oat milk. So one cup of oats, four cups of cool or cold water, You're going to blend that for not more than 30 seconds apparently. And then you're going to strain it through the mesh bag and then do not squeeze the bag because that will encourage whatever it is. I'm not even sure that makes it gummy, basically come out of the oats. So I have not tried this method or recipe before, but I am hopeful. It's just basically a Pinterest recipe, if you could call it that. Let's try and make this and see how it comes out. I'm also going to add a little bit of maple syrup too. They said you could add a little bit of sweetener, so I'm just gonna add like two tablespoons of this. So it should be very quick, very simple. Hopefully this one's a win. I have the final oat milk product here. The consistency looks pretty good. I'm going to taste it and make sure that it tastes how it should. <laughs> so let's see. That's really good actually. That was really easy too. Like three ingredients and way, way cheaper than buying in-store like pre-made oat milk. Cheaper and better for you because it doesn't have like gums and that sort of thing. So. Definitely going to be making more of that in the future. My timer also just went off to heat the oven for the bread. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So basically preheat the oven to 450, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, so preheat the oven to 450. And while it's preheating, this is an important step. You're supposed to put your Dutch oven in the oven while it's preheating instead of like immediately at 450. So I'm gonna grab that, stick it in the oven, start preheating, and then we'll prepare our bread. Basically, we just have to score it, put it on a piece of parchment, and we'll stick it in the oven. Okay, it's been a couple hours now for the bread, so I'm going to check it. It looks just visually by the outside of the towel, like it has definitely gotten bigger. I'm not sure that I would say it's doubled in size, but it's definitely gotten bigger. Yeah, that looks really good. So basically I'm going to transfer this from the towel onto this piece of parchment paper, and then I'm actually going to add a little bit of rice flour on top and then score the dough. And the rice flour basically just stays white in the oven, whereas the rest of it is going to darken a little bit, so it's gonna be a nice contrast. And I'm gonna to try to get a little bit fancy with the scoring design, so we'll see what we come up with, but I'm gonna do that now and then put it in the Dutch oven. So not really the prettiest of designs, and I feel like it kind of flattened a little bit when I moved it from the towel to the parchment paper, but 
we're gonna go with it. I think that it should still come out okay. So I'm gonna check the oven, see if that's preheated. We'll plop this in the Dutch oven and get it in the oven for 30 minutes with the lid on, then take the lid off and put it back in the oven for another 15 to get golden on top. All right, I finished up my recipes. I waited for the veggie stock to cool, and then I just strained it, got all of the chunky bits of vegetables out of it, and basically just am left with vegetable broth at this point. And then I took the bread out of the oven. It's been sitting for a little bit over 30 minutes. They say to just basically put it on a wire rack and let it cool. So here is the veggie stock, pretty much just a standard vegetable broth. I will say that I did not add enough salt by any means, so definitely going to be adding salt whenever I use it in soups. This is just prep stuff for dinner tonight, but here is the bread. I feel like it came out really beautifully. One thing I will say is that when I score the bread, I feel like it doesn't really come out the way other people's does. <laughs> I don't know, maybe there's some technique to it or something that I'm missing. It's like kind of working, but I feel like maybe I'm not cutting it deep enough or something. But we definitely have some like holy bits here and you can see like when I press on it, it is soft inside. So I'm going to cut it open and see how it tastes. can definitely smell the roasted garlic. Oh, look at that. It looks really nice and holy. Okay, this bread is definitely good. Definitely going to be making this again, and I will say it did come out a lot better in terms of the texture compared to the bread I made last week. Well, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. One of my goals for this year is to learn how to make more things like this, whether it's in the kitchen or, you know, maybe growing more herbs and different potted plants on our patio. Basically just want to learn how to be more self-sufficient. Down the road, we want to have like a little homestead. So I figured now is a good time to start learning those skills so that when we do that down the road, I'll already be good at some things. <laughs> like way down the road, I probably want to try to make my own clothes sometime. Just basically fully dive into the self-sufficiency world. So I would say today was a success. Out of all the things I made, I don't know. The bread might be my favorite. The oat milk was really good too and I loved how simple that was. The veggie stock I'm gonna put in a soup tonight and I think once I add more salt, that will be good also. All these things I feel like would save a lot of money. I mean, a garlic loaf artisan bread is like five or six dollars and this was like three cups of flour. So however, however much that is, not very much. <laughs> and the oat milk, way cheaper. And veggie stock, I would say that's cheaper too. And all these things are better for you. So I hope that you got something out of this video. If you guys try any of these recipes or anything similar, let me know, leave me a comment down below. And if you have any tips on any of these recipes, but especially the bread, like with scoring techniques or just anything, if there's some recipe that you think I should try, let me know. And that's about it for today. So I'm gonna put this away, make some dinner, call it a day, but hope that you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe if you are not already hit the like button leave me a comment down below and keep your eyes out for more videos on Asheville the real estate market self-sufficiency 
holistic living, all these different things. I have lots of plans for videos for Q1 of this year and a bunch of ideas going forward. If you've been watching this far, thank you so much. Leave me a comment down below and let me know that too. But all right, I'm gonna end this video. Hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you very soon in the next one.